A cumulative, uh, sorry, a continuous probability function is given by, and then they give you a function here. Let's go ahead and write that down. f of x equals um, 4x cubed on 255. Um, it's defined in a certain domain from 1 to 4, so I'll jot that down. And uh, then it's 0 everywhere else. And then they start asking some stuff. The first thing is, what is this cumulative distribution function? What is the CDF? Okay, so here comes part A. To find the CDF, I'm just going to go back to my definition first, which is right over here. Okay, so it's the integral from your start value to whatever value you happen to be interested in. So this is a variable. What is my start value on this one? one. It's 1. So I go from 1, and then I'm going to go all the way up to, now look, it's whatever you want x to be. Maybe that's 190 centimeters. Maybe it's 170 centimeters. Maybe, I mean, in this, it goes from 1 to 4. So I, I don't know what this actually represents. But um, x is going to be somewhere in there. Okay, so I'm going to go from 1 to x. Okay? Now, good question. Why not 4? If I put 4 in here, if I put 4 in here, and then started to integrate, right? you already know what the answer will be. If I go from the start to the end, and on all the probabilities, I'll just get no, one. Uh, I'll just get I've one. Over 1, over Something has gone wrong, sorry. <laughs> Stay with me, guys. And this is part of why we're like, ooh, new letters here. What's up with that, right? The x is a variable. We'll put some particular values for x later on. But for now, it's meant to be anything. So it stays as a pronumeral, OK? Now, the next thing that happens is f of t. So see how they gave us an f of x? I'm going to write that, but with t's instead of x's. So here it comes. 4t cubed on 255. So it's the same old function. I'm just dressing it up slightly differently. Um, since it's all in t's now, I'm going to integrate with respect to t. OK? All right, now we're actually ready to do the integration. So here is going to be my primitive. Um, 4t cubed, what's going to happen to that t cubed? T4. It's going to become t to the power of 4. And then I divide by, I divide by 4, right? Well, that division by 4 will cancel with the 4 that's already there. Is that OK? Yep. So I'll get t to the power of 4, like you told me, divided by 255, which is already there. OK? Yeah, so in some ways, there's an extra bit here. There's the 4 that was there originally. But then I have to divide by 4 oh, when I integrate. So those 4s cancel. Is that all right? So far, so good, except I need some boundaries. We already decided the boundaries on the first line. So it's from 1 all the way up to x. Cool. Um, all right, so um, that 1 over 255 is just a constant coefficient. So I'm going to take it out the front. 1 over 255. And then here come my upper and lower boundaries. What is my upper boundary? It's, a, it's x. So you're like, oh t to the 4 becomes x to the 4. I've already done the over 255. It's already out the front. Uh, and then here comes the lower boundary. The lower boundary is just 1. So 1 to the power of 4, of course, is 1. That's it. That is the cumulative distribution function. You're like, that wasn't so bad. OK, that wasn't complicated. OK, now the whole point of finding this is, you know how we're looking at all those concepts that you were doing before, mean, probability, all that, right? You have to integrate at some point. So this is the integration done. And now when I have a look at these next questions, I just take this, which is kind of like the integration's already baked into this, and then I use it to work out these next probabilities, I think is what we're asking. Use the CDF to find p of x is less than or equal to 3. OK. Hmm, come over here with me and have a look at how we defined the cumulative distribution function. It's the probability of whatever up to including your particular value, which in this one is three. three. Very good. So I'm going to say, yeah, this is going to go from one to three, but I've kind of already done this stuff, right? Do you see that? Like, oh, you guys did all the integration. So I'm just going to put three into the x. Do you see that? There goes the 3 into the x. So it's 1 over 255, 3 to the power of 4 minus 1. So let me just make that a little more obvious. There goes the 3 being substituted into the one and only spot where there's a little x. That was the little x that I was interested in this time. Um, last I checked, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. 81. So 81 take away 1 is 80. 
Um, that must simplify. They're both factors of 5. What's, what's that become? Um, 16. 16 on 51. Cool, 51. Done. That's it. So what does this mean, right? This is the probability. Sorry, that's not a minus sign. That's a full stop. This is the probability of everything up to and including 3. So you know how I'm defined from 1 to 4? So from 1 to 3, this is the probability. I, I guess this is not very probable. I guess there's more probability on the 3 to 4 section. Does that make sense? Uh, let's quickly have a go at part C. I'm going to run out of space, but we can start the question. It says, um, use this same method to find the probability of um, 1.5 to, is it 3? It's just, no, 3.1. 3.1, just, just to mess with you. Okay, so what's the probability here? How do we use this uh, cumulative density function? Well, what I should point out is, um, I might do it up here actually. Because we, we don't like to continue writing CDF every single time, um, we indicate it with a capital F, which is notation we've used before. It means that, like the primitive, right? So how do I use this guy to find out this? Well. Imagine if this was the question, right? x is less than or equal to 3.1, okay? We know how to find that. We would just say, put in 3.1 into your cumulative distribution function. That would find out that. Is that okay? But you're like, now I don't want the stuff beneath 1.5. I, I don't want all those probabilities because I want to exclude them, right? So that's okay. I will just subtract all those probabilities from 1.5 and before. So that's f of... 1.5. Does that make sense? So this is everything from the start to 3.1. This is everything from the start to 1.5. So the difference between those is the part that you're interested in. If you want me to draw this out for you, right? Here I am from 1 to 4. And the part that I'm really interested in is from 1.5 to 3.1 in this case. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll come to your question in a second, um, Moe. I'm going to work out this part, that's this guy here, and then I'm going to subtract this part, which is this guy here. Do you see what we're doing? You can go ahead and you can work out that value. Moe, did you still have a question? Or? Yeah, why don't you just start with 1.5? Ah, I mean, you do x to the power four minus one. that's a very, very good question. I will answer that question as soon as you've got an answer to this, um, because that's a good question to ask. Have a go. Can you guys work that out for me? Get me a number, and then uh, we'll answer Moe's question. So have a look at this line up here. It's my immediately following one. This top one is f3.1, and this one's f1.5. This is really weird for me, because I'm into photography, and this all sounds like photography talk. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Now, when you go ahead and look at these two lines, because you've got the cumulative distribution function happening once and then it happens again, do you notice this part here and this part here, they just, they just cancel, don't they, right? Which leaves you with this. Now, some of you will look at this and say, wait a second, this is kind of Moe's question, even though he didn't say it in so many words. If you have a look at this, this is basically just the integral from 1.5 to 3.1 of our original probability density function, right? In fact, if we'd asked you to work out that probability, sorry, previous question, if we asked you to work out that probability without saying anything about all this cumulative distribution stuff, that's the way you would have done it. And these two expressions are equivalent. But the point is, like, you're going to be integrating so frequently that often we will ask you, hey, just, just go ahead and find that cumulative distribution function and then use it. And for questions like the one we're about to have a look at on that new piece of paper, it ends up being an easier way to go about it. Um, and then you get your answer. What was it? 0 0.34, 2, 3, and more decimal places, but we'll just, uh, we'll just round off. Are you okay with that?